Welcome back to State of Decay 2 and the Lion's Share. Uh, this is Pat. I haven't played her very much lately, and um, <laughs> I've got some problems in my neighborhood that I'm going to continue to ignore because I want to get as many infestations as possible. So I'm ignoring these infestations. Now, I have been working on my morale, trying to make it a little bit better. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, many infestations is a pervasive, <laughs> it's a pervasive problem right now. So let's, because I want to um, delay the inevitable... Let's look at our options for uh, increasing morale. It looks like okay, we can only do one thing at a time in here. So yeah, so we just turned on some video games. So that's going to help with our morale in the meantime. Because, I mean, we do have plenty of resources. You can see I've got like 49 food, 32 meds, 37 ammo, whatever, all this stuff. But, ooh. I've been waiting around for... Okay, yeah, so they're still joking around with Cleo. You can see uh, the, from the subtitles in the bottom of the screen. We're getting one of the radio interstitials about Cleo. And what I'm mainly here to do is finish all of those Cleo missions. And so while I'm waiting for those Cleo missions to uh, spawn, I'm just killing time. And so I'm thinking that maybe Pat here should kill these screamers. Um, I'm also thinking that maybe Pat should just go scavenge some stuff. I think that, um, you know, fuel is one of the things that I don't have quite as much of as I'd like. Materials I could use a little bit more of, especially since I don't have my um, staging area anymore. So we're going to head over to the not completely picked over land of Fairfield and see if we can pick up a few of those things. So that's mostly what this episode is going to be about. Um, if we do get... A Cleo mission. I'll probably go try to chase that Cleo mission, but we haven't gotten it so far. Also, if we get a Ray Santos mission, we get a free van. Uh, so that's going to be fun. That's going to be my just ongoing thing with this community. We're going to have so many freaking vans. It's going to be amazing. Oh, look. It's my old house. So yeah, and then eventually, maybe next episode, we're going to focus on all those infestations. Let's just see how much those infestations grow during the next half hour, 45 minutes. All right, so I was looking around here, and I think I identified... Yeah, so here's a spot where I can get some gas. And I think that there's a spot with materials near there, too. So we'll, we'll go scavenge over there. That'll be useful. Because I have been going through my fire like crazy. So having more fire and more gas could not hurt. Oh, so yeah. So Awesome Twitch Dude asks, uh, how come there are unused character models for Sasquatch, Lily, some of those other characters? Uh, and then he suggests that he, you actually got the answer right, uh, Awesome Twitch Dude. Uh, he says that you need a character model to make a portrait. Yeah, basically we we devised a workflow for generating the portraits for characters that in, that involves the, taking a snapshot of their model. Um, and so it was actually going to be easier rather than just making just a portrait uh, of each of those characters that might, you know, if we just made it by some other method, it might make them look a little bit weird. Instead, uh, you know, we made sure that they matched by putting them through the same workflow that everything else went through. So while most of your characters get portraits that they use in dialogue and in missions and, you know, on their character, you know, screen or whatever, uh, those, uh, hey those character images. Oh, hey, Tressy has a quest for me. Cool. I'm waiting for a Cleo quest. We just did the same thing with Sasquatch and Lily and other people who talk over the radio. Um, and so that's why those models exist. They were made specifically to generate those those portraits. Zedric von uh, Kamal. Uh, Kat, Katmal? I, I keep getting your name wrong. Sorry, Zedric. I'll just call you Zedric. So uh, Zedric says, is Pat the Frito Bandito in a Vandito? Uh, I do like rhyming words, too. I agree. Um, I don't actually know what the Frito Bandito is. <laughs> I, I feel like this, that's a reference I'm supposed to get, and I, I don't get it. But, okay, I just heard something. Something slightly scary. So we picked up a bunch of gas, which stacks really nicely in the back there. So there's a shed back there. Is it? It's not a source of materials, but there could still be neat stuff in there. So while we're here... Let's go raid this shed. Uh, 
So Malator says, good evening. I'm guessing that with Microsoft buying Blizzard, uh, we'll get some weapons from World of Warcraft and State of Decay 2. Thunder Fury, please. Just kidding. Uh, yeah, so I definitely, you know, I've got, I'm saying no comment about any business dealings because that is not my area. It's not my business to comment. But, um, I mean, you all have not been able to persuade us to put Halo weapons in this game. So the chances of us putting World of Warcraft weapons in this game are pretty, uh, pretty slim. And also the process of acquiring a company as big as Activision Blizzard takes time. Uh, so it'll be a while before Microsoft just owns all these copyrights. Uh, so, you know, have patience. <laughs> we might be in a completely different world by the time that's a possibility. Awesome Twitch dude says someone needs to catalog all the info that Jeffrey drops in his stream. Uh, actually, I'm a little nervous about that. Like, if you start writing it all down and collecting it, somebody might, you know, notice <laughs> how much, uh, how many hints that I give away. All right. Okay, there's. Okay, no, stop it. It's amazing how many times you can shoot at a feral and utterly fail to hit its head. And by you, I mean me. Okay, I'm going to reload this gun even though I'm not planning on using it on these guys just so that I've got it. Ah, that. Oh, I'm lucky that wasn't worse than it was. I was sitting here making a bunch of noise and I could have attracted a much worse kind of horde. That looked like it was just a, like, random little cluster of zombies. Malator points out that uh, Sunny Games actually does a pretty good job of catching me every time I say something a little bit uh, unguarded and making an entire video of it. Uh, that's, that's probably true. Uh... So, um, Awesome Twitch Dude wants to know if I've checked out Archive 81 on uh, Netflix. I have not. I've heard it's creepy, and I do tend to get a little bit, um, nervous about, you know, horror. I'm not, I haven't done enough research into it. I don't know if it's full-on horror or if it's just horror adjacent, but it has made me nervous. Ooh. Isby's Mystery. So... I think this one actually takes me up to Fairfield. And if it's occupying Isby, it might actually be an obstacle in the way of me getting the Haven device. So let me... I'm going to accept this mission. I've got this one. Yay. So I'm going to keep on my, like, scavenging mission up here in, in uh, Fairfield. But I think I'll try to actually go on this mission. So the other spot I was going to stop was just up here. I'll get a little closer in the van. Oh, crap. Ah! Oh, get off. So I wonder, like, if somebody tried to make a supercut of all the times... I've reacted to a zombie climbing out of my car by saying, oh, get off. Or the number of times I've greeted a zombie by saying, hello, friend. I wonder how many times that would be. I don't think anyone should do that because that sounds like a miserable job. Just so I don't accidentally walk into that thing because it was practically invisible. Oh, crap. This thing doesn't have a door. Okay, I'm going to have to be very quiet and look around corners and things to make sure I'm not attracting that horde over there, because that could be pretty bad. Oh, hi. Crap. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. We're noping on out of here. That feral's coming back any second. Where is he? There he is. All right. Oh, hi. Nope, nope, nope. 
Okay. I think I've broken... Ah, so I've broken sight lines with most of those zombies. Ah, how do you navigate your UI? Grr. Okay, we got more interstitials from Cleo. So we're making progress towards the next Haven device mission. But... Okay, so they chased me a short distance, but then I broke... I broke line of sight by jumping over a dynamic object, which used to not be possible. But thank you, Zoe McClatchy, it now is. So, I wonder if I can head back to where I was before. Without... I could see those juggernauts in the distance. I think they might be around the corner from where I was searching. So I might actually be able to still finish this job here. Why are the juggernauts getting scarier? Okay, if I just don't make a lot of noise, I keep my eyes in this direction, I might be able to get the materials out of here without... Ooh, and a fancy axe. I might be able to get the materials out of here without getting into a massive fight with juggernauts. I just... I have no desire to fight a juggernaut without my entire community with me. There's the materials. Okay, it feels like that horde is moving back to a position where they might see me soon. So I'm going to try to sneak around here. Okay, okay, I don't think they're going to detect me over here now. So one reason I decided that I wanted to take Pat scavenging is because Pat has got most of her skills leveled up except wits. And so I kind of want her to search as many uh, containers as I can so that she can, you know, sort of shore up that weakness in her character. Hello, zombie. <laughs> so, uh, Ranith Court is joking that I uh, that I just confirmed epic mounts for the next update. Uh, yeah, just, just I mean, I know you were just joking, but yeah, considering the number of times we've explained why we're not putting quadrupeds in State of Decay 2, uh, I think that epic mounts would definitely, obviously, be out. Alright. I can hear this. Oh, it's just that zombie. Okay. Oh, that's where the other container was. I was trying to figure out where the other container at this... Uh, trailer was. It's right here. The blue and white trailer. <laughs> Yours like, horses confirmed. I'm glad you all are kidding. Because <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, I think there is some pretty cool stuff coming to State of Decay 2. I can't tell you what any of it is yet. But I wouldn't want, uh, you know, people to get get specific things in mind as what's supposed to be coming to State of Decay 2 and then have us disappoint you by giving you something else. It's also cool, but wasn't the thing you were thinking of. Okay, so he vomited, but he did not scream. So there should be no... I was killing those guys so they wouldn't summon bloaters. Um, and it looks like I managed to dodge that bullet, which is good. This is... is this, this is the wrong way. This is not where I go. You know what I should do? Turn on my headlights. That's what I should do. Yeah, I think I need to go. I need to go around and across this bridge to get to Chavez. That's right. Oh man, I love our vehicle handling. It's just so easy to go like screaming around a corner like that. <laughs> So when I said that we couldn't have quadrupeds in the game, people are now like, ostriches confirmed! Uh, which is actually, that was one of my favorite parts of um, the Swiss Family Robinson movie uh, that I watched when I was a kid. It was, I, forget, I don't even know when, what decade it was from. It was made in the 60s or... I don't know. But uh, they rode an ostrich in that and it was amazing. That was for uh, you, whoever keeps reminding me to use my health pickups. Um, all right, so 
I'm grabbing Chavez. Isby needs us to do some research into Red Talon stuff, and Chavez is the answer. Is he already following me? Cool. Well, I know where I'm going, so I'm not really going to listen to him. I'm just going to start heading in that direction. Oh, no. <laughs> Jedi Psychtrick says that apparently emus won a war in Australia. They're pretty badass. <laughs> really? <laughs> I have not heard about the emu war. Um, huh. Is there... Okay, so yeah, I see these little sheds over here. Ooh, that one might have materials. You know what? Before we continue on, Chavez, let's go pick up a little bit more materials. Just because I got you here to walk my back, watch my back, to walk my back? Know, walking my back might be comfortable at this point, too. I've noticed I've been getting, like, this feeling of, like, I don't know, muscle stiffness or muscle strain just, like, throughout my torso. And I think it's from just sitting in an office chair feeling very tense and anxious. I think it's causing my muscles to just sort of, like, tense up and give me, like, old man pains. Um, so that sucks. Uh, I need to get better about that. I don't know what I need to do. Maybe take more walks or something? Oh, what? Chavez, I leave you alone for a second. You're getting eaten by zombies. What the heck? This is why your unit died, Chavez. You don't know how to survive out here. Okay, so I'll carry this. I'll drop that. I don't have much room left, but... Well, yeah, let's, let's, let's drop stuff off before we go over... There it is, over here. Let's drop stuff off so we got room to scavenge in the place where we need to scavenge. Okay, I like I like our vehicle handling overall. The Vandito has some pretty slick tires. I feel like we might be able, like I don't know. Somebody should change the tires on the Vandito. <laughs> I just now and then I'll start fishtailing at times and I did not expect a fishtail. Alright, so, so we're supposed to say this as I'm approaching the location, but I'm actually not approaching the location. I'm going to an outpost. Here we go. To the outpost. I already used a third of my tank of gas. So I think I had this thing completely full originally. Luckily, I've got a bunch of extra gas in the uh, in the back, so we're fine. Let's see here. Okay, so let's drop off stuff I don't need. This and this and this. That noise wasn't any good. Not a big fan of that noise. So I guess we do not need all of these gas cans. I don't know if you can hear the piano in the background. My daughter is playing some Sarah McLachlan from when I was a teenager. She actually heard me play that song so much growing up that it sort of stuck in her head, and so now she plays it. It's uh, it's I Will Not Forget You by uh, Sarah McLachlan. It's funny, one of her more like sort of uh, popular songs was called I Will Remember You. And I actually, that I consider that one to be one of her more boring songs. I was never that interested in it. Um, but I love I Will Not Forget You, which is, it's weird. Those sound like they should be the same song. I mean, those words mean about the same thing. Uh, but yeah, I will not forget you is a... Okay, we are killing those bloaters. We're not letting that stick around. Anyway, that, just, that was just a hazard. But yeah, it's it's got this really interesting sort of rhythm to it where... Oh gosh, no! Did that spawn on me, or was it just... What did I just... Okay. I couldn't tell if that spawned on me, or I just came around a corner and saw it. Ugh, that was no good at all. Um, okay. I mean, we're alive. I've got painkillers. 
can we survive the rest of this? I mean, I've got I've got Chavez's backup, right? It's just clearing one site and scavenging some stuff. It can't be that bad. How bad could it be? How bad could it be? I'm sure Pat is perfectly safe coming up here in the condition that she's in right now. Oh, hey, Marshawn just recovered from his burning lungs from the last time I collided with a bloater. I love that he's just casually talking to me while a zombie's eating his face. So yeah, so... The systems of this game were really not... Were really not designed... Oh, I thought I could maybe yank it down, but I guess not. Were really not designed to support player characters just talking to each other all the time. Like, you... Ha to be able to guarantee that a character can just get through a conversation without a bunch of problems... Um... You have to have more control over what could be going on. You know, a more linear game with cutscenes, stuff like that, is is a lot easier for that. Or a character who's not physically with you. But uh, yeah, for the <laughs> that's not what we got. We've got an open world game where like anything can happen, and you just can't predict how anybody's going to behave or what's going to need to go on. Um, so we're searching for something up here. Is it? I guess it's got to be in here. There we are. Red Talon Codebook. Hey, Chavez. Let me check it out. There you go. Okay. So, Raneth Court asked me, what's my favorite Sophie B. Hawkins song? I don't know who that is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so Jedi confirms that actually that bloater was there. It was just coming around a corner. Good. I've already talked about how I feel a little awkward about this particular scene because it sounds like, you know, Chavez is sort of like horning in on uh, Isby's life when, like, when she doesn't want him there, which is, it's got some, you know... Weird implications. That's not really what's going on. They have a long history and he's being a supportive friend. But it's hard to tell that if you're coming in from the outside. And I I'm nervous about what players' reactions to that part of the story, you know, are going to be. But, you know, I mean, th I think most people probably just... Honestly, it's a video game. Most people don't pay any attention to what's going on in the story at all. Oh, hello. I uh, got gotcha. you. Yeah, uh, sorry that I don't know who Sophie B. Hawkins is. I really, I was, uh, you know, I liked Sarah McLaughlin before she was super popular, so that makes me feel special. But other than that, I am not cool when it comes to music. There's a lot of music that I probably should know way more about than I do. I was really, really sad to hear that Meatloaf died, though. I was a huge fan of Meatloaf. I mean, I didn't listen to, you know, like, all of his songs religiously, but... Oh, gosh, no! Stop! Ah! Uh... Oh, get off the... Get off the car. Okay, anyway. Um... I could play, like many people in that era, I could play Anything for Love uh, on the piano. Including the stuff at the beginning that I could do that really fast with my hands, and it would hurt after practicing for a while, but um, it was still fun. I'm so bad at shooting. Um, but actually, uh, it was Objects in the Rearview Mirror was my favorite song of his. I used to play that one on the piano all the time. Hello? Hello! He's trying to give me a hug, I chop his arm off. <laughs> Director Cosmic says we need a piano stream. Uh, so I have not really played the piano regularly for a long time, so I am not good anymore. I was okay when I was a teenager, uh, but my skill has steadily decreased over time. Um, 
and partly you know, I don't really play now because you know the only real time that I have to myself is usually late at night after the kids go to bed um, and that's not a good time to be playing a loud piano we do have a piano uh, but actually the main one who plays it is my daughter uh, who is much better now at the piano than I ever was at any point in my life she's she can actually like sight read stuff pick things up really quickly she can do more complex things with her hands than I ever could uh, so I'm very proud of her she has uh, it's sort of she has taken the, whatever talent uh, her mom and I gave her and she's uh, magnified it quite a lot oh hey look my favorite thing a zombie siege I feel like every second episode of this series I start with a siege. It's so it looks like next episode is gonna be the same thing. I think basically until we get an update where uh, the nature of sieges change, we can kind of expect that that'll be the cadence. All right, one more container to find in here. And again, the main like I don't think I'm likely to really need a lot of the stuff I'm finding in here. Stop it. But one of the reasons I'm doing this is to level up her wit skill. So we've cleared the house. That means I should be able to see the last container as an icon. There it is, out here on the porch. It used to be these porch ones were really, really hard to find. It's a lot easier now, especially now that Eric sort of changed things up so that uh, you can see those icons whenever you uh, whenever you clear the place. Oh, hey, Le Coalition's here. I think he's been here for a while and I didn't acknowledge him. Hi, Le Coalition. <laughs> okay. So, I do need to head home within the next eight minutes. Is there anything else around here that feels valuable and worth... Ooh. Fish? Wait, what? Fish cleaning restrooms? Okay. So, I named all of the sites in the original three maps... And I think I, I can't remember. I, I, I honestly can't remember whether or how much I contributed to Providence Ridge. Um, but I didn't name any of the sites here. Uh, that was, uh, so I did, I did name a lot of them in Heartland. And so some of the sites in this area, in, in this map, sheesh, look at all these ferals. Some of the sites in this map inherited names that I gave them uh, when I was uh, working on the Heartland map. But... All the new stuff, especially all the stuff up here in Fairfield, which wasn't in Heartland, that was all uh, named by Larry Wu. And so I, oh man, I wanted all three of the ferals to come chasing me. I want to take care of them all. I want to get as much influence as I can. Where'd they go? As soon as I get back in the car, they're going to show up. All right, whatever. Wait, who's this? Okay, hello, zombie. But yeah, so so these sites, they can still surprise me. And so yeah, the fish cleaning restroom, that's an interesting one. I feel like I need to go check that out and see what it is. Oh, Gior, sorry that I missed that comment. Yeah, so when I was mentioning uh, like mourning the death of uh, of Meatloaf, uh, Gior said uh, his name is Robert Paulson, which I've actually seen... A lot of people saying that, like, on Twitter, like, 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 basically repeating the phrase, his name is Robert Paulson, to mourn the death of Meatloaf. Because, of course, like, in Fight Club, that was what they did to mourn the death of... Ah, dang it! Yep, uh, I did my traditional thing of just firing over the heads of things instead of actually at their heads. But we survived. It's fine. So let's... The fish cleaning restroom, huh? But yes, repeating his name is Robert Paulson. Is, it does feel like a, a fitting send-off for uh, Meatloaf because that is, yeah. So I think that actually my wife's and my first date was watching Fight Club. Uh, it was long after Fight Club came out. It wasn't like in the theater. We saw it on video. But that was the first... <laughs> our, like our first date was to was to see Fight Club. So that's, you know, I, I, I love that movie. That's like, 
deep, deep in my heart as like a formative memory is watching that movie. And I am not one of the people who came out of it thinking that the point was, fight clubs are cool. Let's be all violent and terrible. Uh, I was one of the people who came away with it as a, uh, came away from it recognizing it as a satire and uh, realizing, like, oh, wow. Like, like basically, the thing I think was, was clever about Fight Club was that it recognized, like, a real cultural force, kind of a dangerous cultural force of, like, all of these sort of, like, um, frustrated, disenfranchised young men um, who have, you know, turned out to be, you know, uh, responsible for a lot of bad things that have happened in society. Like, like, like uh, Fight Club was kind of a little prophetic in that it recognized, you know, hey, this is a problem. This is a cultural problem. We've got all these disaffected young men that are just kind of, you know, feeling like they need to behave in jerky ways in order to feel manly. That's a problem, right? Um, and, it, and it depicted that really dramatically in a really sort of extreme way with like absolute madman versions of that character going nuts and doing extremely destructive things. And, you know, that's not literally what happened. They, you know, they didn't blow up all of the credit card companies or anything like that, but we are seeing a lot of fallout from the same stuff. So yeah, so it's like, so I definitely read it as sort of a satire, uh, sort of highlighting genuine problems in society that, you know, we ought to do something about. Though solving, like, deep social problems like that, it's not a an easy thing to do. It's not a thing you can just be like, oh, yeah, oh, I didn't realize that was a problem. Now that I know, here's the solution. It's like, I don't know. I don't know how to fix it. But I, you know, like, as the first time I watched Fight Club, as sort of like a young man in the 90s, I was like, oh, wow, yeah, all of these emotions that these characters are feeling that are driving them to become these crazy people. I can feel those emotions. Now, I grew up in a, you know, stable, supportive family with a lot of advantages. Uh, I didn't turn into a psycho because of those feelings, but I totally understood those feelings and where they come from, you know, and, and, and so I was like, I was kind of impressed by the movie because I was like, wow, this movie gets a lot about what it feels like to sort of be a person in this society and it's depicting that going horribly wrong. Ah, that's something we should be careful of, you know? <laughs> anyway, so I, yeah, I've got a lot of respect for Fight Club. I like Fight Club. There's some folks who, who like, just look at it primarily as, be, like, like all the idiots who, when Fight Club was new, were, were trying to, were responding to the movie by actually starting Fight Clubs and stuff. Like, those idiots... Like, they were looking, they look at that and say, oh, see, look, this is what Fight Club wanted to do. It turned all of these people into psychopaths and, uh, you know, encouraged all of this behavior. And I'm like, okay, I mean, when you make a piece of satirical art and people miss the point and think that it is the opposite of what it is, I mean, I don't want, I don't want to try to make a rule that says you can never make satire because some idiot might misunderstand it. Like, I just feel like that, that that costs a lot, you know, say, like saying, oh yeah, you just can't have this kind of art for clever people because there's dumb idiots who are going to think that the art is saying the opposite of what it's saying. Um, like, I think that we need to solve the idiot problem separately from the art problem. Like, let's keep making clever, satirical, ironic art that highlights problems in uh, interesting and challenging ways. Let's keep doing that. And then let's also talk to idiots about what it means. Let's try to solve the, you know, unintended consequences in some way. But folks who are just hostile to the art, because because they're like, oh, look, look what it made people do. I'm like, no, it didn't make people do those things. It didn't turn people into jerks. They were already jerks. They were already dumb. They just... <laughs> it, it wasn't going to take a lot to turn some people into jerks. And it's not the fault of the piece of art that they watched. Okay, so. As soon as I walk in here, it's going to be siege time. I'm going to think, what do I want? Okay, so, yeah. I, I want to fill this car up with gas, first of all. Hey, 
<laughs> so La Coalition is getting uh, very anxious for me to give somebody in my community an AA-12. I'm not sure exactly why. It might be because we're about to have a siege. So let me try to remember. Did I already give one of them the AA-12 or is it sitting here in my supply locker? Let's get down into shotgun territory. Which guns are the shotguns? Hold on. Shotgun. There, there they are. Shotguns. Z Dog Blunderbuss, Kodiak, Trench Gun, Ursus, Sawed Off, Mare's Leg. Okay, no, we're out of. I might already have given someone. Oh, wait. The R12 import. Is that. Is that an AA12? Okay. Crap! Oh, that's usually how I start new streams, not how I end them. We gotta end this stream. So, okay, I've got an AA12 in my pockets. I could hand it to a character if I get a moment's peace but, uh, as this thing is starting up. So maybe we'll do that. But for right now, I want to start with a siege. I don't want to end with a siege. So let's uh, let's wrap this up. That's a subscribe button. Uh, the next video that I'm about to make is going to go right there. We're going to fight a siege and then clear out some infestations. So join us for that.